Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to go over how to make a very simple subroutine inside Excel VBA. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when we're talking about making a subroutine, a subroutine is just another way of interacting with Excel in order to provide the user with information. Now, the main difference between a subroutine and an Excel function primarily has to do with that a subroutine does not return a value. That's the main thing that you will find. Now, at the level that we're working at, this is not significant just yet. However, going forward, this difference between a function and this difference with a subroutine will become more and more important. And so it doesn't you know, return a value. And also, um, you can't use a subroutine in uh, formulas per se, but you can use a function in formulas. But what we want to do right now is we want to, and let me show you what we're trying to do here. We want to do the following. We want to make a very, very simple subroutine that gives us, that takes an input number, raises it to the third power, and displays the output number. Now again, you can of course do this with functions, but we're trying to serve a different purpose here because sometimes we want our user to interact with the worksheet maybe, and maybe there are times when we don't want them so much to interact with the worksheet. And so to, to sidestep interacting with the worksheet, we're going to use a subroutine in which they type their number into an input box and then this this information is returned in the output box. It's not returned inside the actual worksheet that you see behind this text box uh, on, on of Microsoft Excel. Now again, we can do that, but that's not our goal here. And so the reason we're doing a subroutine is because our goal is slightly different. So now before we actually do this, we need to try to visualize what we're doing here. And so we're going to go over here and take a look at the display here. And this is what is going to happen as we pull this together. Of course, we're going to start, you know, with a start box, some sort of an input box that's going to be first. And then what's going to happen is that our function, or excuse me, our subroutine is going to have to pull our, our X value, whatever that is. So they're going to type that in somewhere, which means that I'm going to have to dim or make a variable called X. Now, once we get the X value here, we have to, of course, our goal is to raise it to the third power. So we're going to have to create a new variable called Y. It's going to be X to the third power, which means I also need to dim a variable called Y as well. Okay. Then we're going to have to output Y. And that'll be another box, text box, output Y. And then after that, we're done essentially. So just draw a circle and put end. This is what we're going to be trying to capture. This is like a visual diagram of what we're going to do. And now what's happening is that we need to make this happen using VBA. So we're going to go back to Excel and we're going to go into VBA and see if we can make this happen. All right. So we're inside VBA now, or excuse me, Excel. We'll move over to VBA now. All right. So this is what we need to do. We are going to make a sub. So we're going to type in sub and we're going to call it third power. Again, if you're familiar with uh, Excel, you know that Excel already has a function for this, but we're not going to use it. So we're going to dim X as double. Remember that was our first variable. Put a comma here and Y as double. So those are our two variables. Now for X, we're going to equal input box. This is going to cause an input box to, to display. You will see all this in a second. And inside the input box, we're going to say in quotes, enter a number like that. Close it out. Now we're going to use Y equals application dot worksheet function. Whoops. And then dot power. Okay. And so we're going to do X. That's our first argument. And then we're going to raise it to the third power. That's our second argument like so. 
And then we're going to make a message box now. And then we're going to type right here in quotation marks, your number, excuse me, number is, put a space there, another quotation mark, ampersand. Then it's going to display the Y variable, ampersand. Then it's going to display a period to complete the English. And it looks like we're just about done. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this to work now. So we go click back on the first line and then we're going to click on this little green triangle here. It says run sub. You can also press F5. And so now it takes me to my, my worksheet page here. So I'm going to put in the number two. Now we know that two raised to the third power is going to be eight. So I type in two and you can see it says your number is eight. So it looks like our little subroutine here works. And so notice with this subroutine, we didn't input anything on the worksheet. It's all inside text boxes or message boxes, input boxes. And that is what we wanted in this particular situation. You don't always want to do that. The tool you use depends on the situation. But in the context of our goals, this is exactly what we wanted. And it would be much more difficult to try to do this with a function if it's even possible. So let me see if I can kind of summarize what we did here. So in this particular video, what we did was is that we created a subroutine which allows us to perform specific actions based on what you wanted to do. And in our case, we wanted it to take a number, raise that number to the third power, and then give it back to us. Now, the beauty of subroutines is that you can create different subroutines in different places and you can have something called modular programming going on where you have little pieces of code here and there that you can repeat and reuse over and over again. This is one of the reasons why you make these subroutines. It's a little piece of code, like in its own little space, that can be called by other code to complete things. And so that is why we did that. So once we set everything up, I'll just show you again. We had to, of course, give our subroutine a name. We had to dim some variables, you know, variables that it was going to be expected to use. And then we set everything up where we raised our x value to the third power. We gave our code here for the message box and we ended the sub subroutine. And then once we ran it by clicking on, on the little green triangle there, we were able to see that it works. And so there were no problems. So as we go forward, we will learn more about how we can call these subroutines, how we can use them and how we can have success with them. So for now, that's it. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of educational research techniques. Thank you for watching and take care.